I did this video for Six Flags. Now it's time to turn my scope to Cedar Fair. Every year, the chain looks at their collection of parks and decides which ones will be graced with a new coaster. They take a lot of factors into account. How much space do they have? How much are they willing to spend? And also, what does the park need? That's all I want to look at today. This is a coaster enthusiast dream video. But since not every park can get a Mach Extreme Spinner, an RMC T-Rex, or a B&M Giga, I'll keep it in the ballpark of reality. These are the biggest coaster gaps for each Cedar Fair Park. I'm going to use the same checklist from the last video. This will tell us how complete a park's lineup really is. If anything here is missing, then there's a gap that needs to be filled. Airtime, launch, wood, multi-looper, not on the track, spinner, standout coaster, and finally, any other minor fringe need, which may apply to stacked parks who have everything else. I'm also going to leave off Gilroy Gardens. That only has two family coasters, and doesn't really make sense for this video. Let's start up north. Canada's Wonderland has a massive coaster lineup that Cedar Fair has tried to improve over the last 12 years. They have their standout coaster, and you can pick any of the three B&Ms standing over 200 feet. And these have plenty of airtime. They have four coasters under the track, two wooden coasters, a launch coaster and backlot stunt coaster. They have plenty of coasters with lots of inversions, including Dragonfire. And Wonder Mountain's Guardian is kind of a spinning coaster. Kind of. They could do better here, but I'm willing to ignore that box and give them something they really need, and that's an extreme launch coaster. Backlot stunt coaster is basically a family ride, so something with a more powerful launch attached to an extreme layout would be a great fit. Maybe it can throw in some ejector airtime, since the park is missing that also. The mock multi-launch would be a great fit, but I would like to modify it to have a much more powerful launch. These mock coasters are notorious for pushing the trains, more so than launching them. So give me an inversion-filled layout with ejector hills, and a little acceleration to go along with it. Down the east coast to King's Dominion, they more than have the standout coasters covered with a prolific one-two punch. Twisted Timbers is an absolute airtime machine. They have three older wooden coasters, a launch thrill coaster with Flight of Fear, and a launch family coaster with Backlot Stunt Coaster. Dominator and Anaconda serve as the multi-loopers. They will have a spinning coaster when their free spin opens, and if they get that wing coaster to replace Volcano, that'll give them something under the track. That's a pretty good scorecard, so we can nitpick their gaps a little. They could use a modern wooden coaster, since their newest is Grizzly, and that's in its 40th season. It's hard to believe a park this size only has one B&M. A wing coaster would make two, but I think they could use a third. I think this park could benefit the most from a B&M Hyper. There isn't any floater airtime in the park, even with Twisted Timbers being built to throw you out of your seat. I still think a B&M Hyper offers something different, combining height and graceful airtime moments. I know the park is staying away from this option because Apollo's Chariot is just an hour away, but do I care? No, I do not. Over at Carowinds, there are 14 coasters, and some of them are pretty good. Fury is a great standout. Intimidator gives the airtime. Afterburn hangs under the track, with an assist from Nighthawk and Kitty Hawk. They have a few inversion machines, including Carolina Cyclone and Copperhead Strike. And this also checks the biggest box they were missing before 2019, the launch coaster. There isn't a spinning coaster, but there are plenty of other family-friendly rides here. Hurler is their one wooden coaster remaining, other than Woodstock Express, which is made for kids. While I think the park could benefit from something like a wing coaster, or something with a more powerful launch, I think Hurler is such a weak wooden coaster that it's their biggest gap. They need a modern wooden coaster. I was thinking possibly an RMC, but I don't see RMC ground up woodies being a thing anymore. A real solid GCI or gravity group would be a great fit here, and would open up the door for the park to RMC Hurler. Those two coasters would make Carowind's lineup even more juicy than it is right now. On to Worlds of Fun, one of the less privileged parks. They have two solid woodies with Timberwolf and Prowler, a spinner with spinning dragons, a coaster under the track with Patriot, which also throws in some inversions, along with Boomerang. Mamba doesn't really do anything. Airtime? Not really. There's nothing here that has a launch, and nothing here can really be classified as a standout coaster. With just six adult coasters, there's obviously a lot of options, and there should probably be a pair of coasters to cover all these gaps. But if Worlds of Fun wanted a standout coaster with inversions, airtime, and a launch, I would get the Intamin Blitz. This really is the perfect fit for the park, and it's not like they lack the space to do it. Let's go to a park with zero space, Knott's Berry Farm. Ghost Rider is a great standout, and they're one wooden coaster. They have all kinds of launch coasters, 
Silver Bullet under the track, Sierra Sidewinder for the spinning, Hang Time for the inversion machine. The only thing they're kinda missing is an airtime machine. Ghost Rider has good airtime, but it's not built for airtime. I think an absolute perfect fit for the park is a B&M Hyper. Even though there isn't any space here, Hypers can fit along the perimeter and fly over footpaths. And there isn't a single good Hyper west of Chicago. There's no height limit here either, so that wouldn't be a problem. Join King's Dominion and get yourself a B&M Hyper. It would be a big hit. Up the coast to another park that's 100% developed, California's Great America. They have a very solid one-two punch with Gold Striker and Railblazer. Either one can be considered a standout coaster, and both have good airtime. But in terms of a standout coaster and an airtime machine, the park could do better. Grizzly joins Gold Striker in the wood category. Demon and Patriot throw in some inversions. Flight Deck hangs under the track. And that's pretty much it. No spinner, but more importantly, no launch coaster. I'm gonna say their best bet is a mock multi-launch. This could be a contender for standout coaster. Throw in some airtime. The park could use some more inversions. And if they wanna spin a little, maybe they can be like Australia and add a spinning back car as an upcharge. They lost Grease Lightning back in 2002. And after 20 years, it may be time to get another launch into the park. Valley Fair has been neglected for a long time, but still have eight coasters. Renegade is apparently a top tier GCI, but it's kind of a weak standout. But it does check the airtime box and the wood box, along with High Roller. Steel Venom hangs under the track and has the park's only launch. Excalibur and Wild Thing are both interesting rides, but they don't bring a whole lot to the table. Just speed and maybe some airtime. Corkscrew has three inversions, and it's the park's only coaster that goes upside down. That, to me, is the park's biggest gap. They need a modern inversion machine, and who better to bring that to the park than B&M, who shockingly have never done work here before. When Dragon Challenge closed the Islands of Adventure, I heard a lot of clamoring for Cedar Fair to buy one of the sides for Valley Fair, which never happened, but a B&M invert would be amazing here. It's a great classic model, the best of B&M's looping collection, and it's time for Valley Fair to finally get one. Michigan's Adventure is even more sad than Valley Fair, with just six adult coasters three of which are wood. Shivering Timbers is a pretty good standout, also checking the airtime box. Corkscrew and Thunderhawk bring a few inversions into the park, with Thunderhawk also being under the track. Nothing that spins, nothing that launches. I think something with a powerful launch would work here. Maybe mixing in some inversions to give the park a little variety. Why not go with an SNS air launch? But is this too close to Great America to have a Max Force style launch looper? Let's face it, nothing is close to Michigan's adventure. That's why it is the way it is. Give them an air launch. They haven't gotten a new coaster since 2008, and that was a hand-me-down. One more park on the sadder side, before we talk about the parks at the head of the class. Dorney Park used to get some really nice investments before it just... stopped. I don't believe anything here is the standout coaster. Steel Force is just like Wild Thing at Valley Fair, or Mamba at Worlds of Fun. It's just big, it's fast, and it's there. Not really serving much of a purpose. Talon hangs under the track. So does Possessed, which also has the park's only launch. Hydra has a nice set of inversions, and Thunderhawk is the park's wooden coaster, and it's edging closer to its 100th birthday. No spinner, no real airtime, and most importantly, no real standout. We do know the park is looking at getting a Gravity Group shuttle coaster, like Switchback, and this will be a nice addition, but a standout? Not really. For Dorney Park, I can envision a ground-up RMC iBox. If you want a standout airtime machine, there you go. It doesn't have to be anything massive. If they just got something on a small footprint with a short ride time, like Goliath at Six Flags Great America, that would serve the park well. A more realistic option would be the RMC Raptor, which serves the same purpose. They may want to opt for that over an iBox with a wood structure, if they end up getting that Gravity Group wooden coaster. Okay, on to the big guns. Starting with Kings Island. 14 coasters, and you can choose your standout. I'll go with Orion. Diamondback is an airtime machine. The park has four wooden coasters of all sizes. Also two launch coasters, with Flight of Fear and Backlot Stunt Coaster. Banshee hangs under the track, along with Invertigo, Bat, and Flying Ace Aerial Chase. And even though they lost Vortex, they still have quite a few inversions with Banshee, Flight of Fear, and Invertigo. They're a little weak on traditional inversions here, and the one box they didn't check is the Spinner. I'm going to finally play my wild card here. This is the perfect opportunity for the Mock Extreme Spinner. The launch isn't really needed, but it's a bonus. They can pack it with inversions, and finally get something in the park that spins. I think a regular mock multi-launch is a safer bet to take over Vortex's plot of land, but I could also see an extreme spinner fitting in here nicely. I'd rather see an RMC iBox Son of Beast coaster, but in terms of filling gaps, the extreme spinner makes more sense. Finally, the king of coaster parks, Cedar Point. Even though I crown Kings Island as my favorite park all around, 
Cedar Point still has the best collection of coasters. Pick your standout, whether it be Millennium Force or Steel Vengeance or anything else you want. Steel Vengeance has the most airtime of any coaster in the world, with Magnum playing a nice supporting role. Raptor is under the track, along with Iron Dragon and Wicked Twister, which also brings a launch, along with Maverick and Top Thrill Dragster. There are a bunch of multi-loopers, including Ruguru and Gatekeeper, and the park is left with one wooden coaster, their oldest operating coaster, Blue Streak. For a park with 17 coasters, they do have a few gaps. The fact that they have only one wooden coaster, and it's from 1964, is hard to believe. A modern wooden coaster would be great here, and I'm sure that they'll do something about that down the line. The one box that was left completely unchecked is the spinner, and some insane mock extreme spinner would be a great fit, just like at Kings Island. But this is Cedar Point, and there's another spinning coaster that they could get that would be a step up, and that's the SNS 4th Dimension coaster. SNS acquired the rights to this back in 2002 when they bought Aerodynamics assets, but they've only built two, and none in the last eight years. Cedar Point should bring this out of retirement, make it between 250 and 300 feet tall, and make it possibly the craziest ride on the planet. Steel Vengeance is all about the airtime with a few inversions, and this fourth dimension coaster could possibly top it, while offering a totally different experience. So that's how I would fill each Cedar Fair Park's biggest coaster gap, not really taking cost or manufacture into account, but still keeping it somewhat realistic. Let me know what you think about these picks, and what you might have picked for any one of these parks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to subscribe. It helps me out, and you won't want to miss any more content just like this. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.